Good morning to all of you. Uh, so you have so far heard about the direct impacts of climate change on crop production from the first speaker, Dr. Mark. And I'm just going to highlight about the impacts of climate change on the indirect uh, uh, things through weeds, pest diseases, and others. You know, in the fourth assessment report of IPCC, it has been clearly indicated that in the lower latitude, especially the regions impacted by seasonally wet and dry tropical climate, the climate change is going to impact, especially the increase in temperature, even with the small incremental increase of one to two degrees Celsius is going to impact the crop production on a negative way. So coming to a country like India, which is largely dependent on agriculture, the farmers, more than 70% of the people are directly or indirectly engaged with agriculture. So under those regions, any increase in temperature is expected to negatively impact crop production and thereby the food security issues. So and another important thing is agriculture is impacted by um, climate change, but it also contributes to climate change. Because if you just take into consideration of plant protection, indiscriminate use of pesticides, weedicides, kind of things are largely impacting the greenhouse gas emission. So that is also another important thing which we need to look into. And the last part is the crop improvement. You know, like uh, the not only biotic stresses, but also abiotic stresses, uh, uh, like uh, uh, heat, cold injury, heat injury, and kind of things are also happening um, by and large. So for that, we need to go into the modern art of crop improvement, such as genetic engineering and kind of thing. So under that uh, context, my topic is organized. Uh, and I acknowledge greatly various scientists who have worked on this, and I have taken information from their work. So my outline of talk is going to be a bit of an introduction, and then climate change impacts on weeds, pests, and diseases, and how to adapt to climate change situation under those contexts, and a little bit about crop production, conclusions, and future direction. So as we all know, like the agroecosystem consists not only on crops, but also the associated things such as pests, natural enemies, and kind of others. When we just see the disease and insect pest damage, Approximately 42% of loss in eight important food crops and cash crops amounting to $300 billion is happening almost annually. The climate change influences the ecology of the weeds, pests and diseases with possible implications for crop protection and pesticide use. So this slide gives an overview about how the crop losses are happening abiotic as well as biotically. So the biotic factors mainly includes weeds, animal pests, including insects, mites, nematodes, etc., and then the pathogens. And the right hand side of the thing is just indicating the scenario without crop production. If you just see, there is one particular line over here. This is the actual yield which we are getting it, and the top line is the attainable yield. So in between these two, the last potential is happening. So this last potential is because of the, this is because of the weeds, pathogens, virus, and then the animal pest. But now the current situation, we get the actual yield to this stage because we are taking up lot of crop production activities, which actually boost the yield from this level to this level. So th this actually involves lot of uh, cultural as well as the chemical control. So we, we just come to know that without crop production, our yield levels will be much lesser. So let me just go into climate change and weeds. Then if you just see, there are 46 major crops over the globe. It's grown for food production. But for that, more than 410 troublesome weed species are prevailing. So if you just see the weeds, it has got a very short life cycle. No? like high reproductive rate, rapid response to rainfall events, and adapted to wide range of environment and soil. So as Darwin said, struggle for existence is the concept for weeds. So in weeds, it competes with the crops for nutrients, water, as well as light. It impacts are mainly seen through the reduction in the yield, as well as the reduction in the quality, and it also hampers the harvest. It also creates health problem because some of the weeds are poisonous weeds and it creates allergy. So how the climate change is affecting weeds? Climate change affects weeds as, as much as it affects the crop. 
When the higher con concentration of carbon dioxide is there, it simulates the photosynthetic activity and growth of the weeds, reduce the evapotranspiration and increase the water use efficiency. It is also competitive because greater genetic variation is existing within the weed community and it has got physiological plasticity and may gain more advantage from the climate change when compared to crops. Then it possesses many pre-adaptation at the molecular level, biochemical level or whole plant level itself to respond more positively to climate change compared to the crops. So the weeds are on the better side compared to crops always. How the higher temperatures can impact weed? Some of the benefits of elevated carbon dioxide is offset by the higher temperature. It also allows sleeper weeds to become invasive. That means the weeds which are very less important will become invasive and more problematic in the future. Then expansion of weeds into higher latitudes or higher altitudes can also happen because of the changing climate and increase in temperature. Very aggressive weeds that are currently found in the lower latitude or limited in the higher latitude. One good example is the itch grass, which is profusely tillering and robust grass weed. It could invade to central Midwest and California with the three degree warming trend. So what would be the impacts of precipitation changes? Normally, the precipitation changes leading to drought that can actually affect the crops much more compared to the weeds. So any factor which increase environmental stress on crops may make them more vulnerable for attack of pest and disease. So the crops would always be on the negative side compared to the weeds. Okay, I just wanted to compare because in the case of weeds as well as crops, we have got C3 and C4 crops. And I just wanted to compare how the impact of C C4 weeds on the C3 crops. If we take the statistics, 14% of the world's worst weed are C4 plants and 76% of the harvested crops are C3 crops. So under such context, I just wanted to tell something about how the weeds can influence the C3 crops. The major hypothesis is C3 crops would benefit from the elevated carbon dioxide than the C4 weeds. So under that constant context, C3, weeds, C3 crops have some advantage. And, but the major research gap is temperature increase as well as drought in combination with elevated carbon dioxide trends are not yet clearly studied. So this needs further provocation, I mean further investigation. Optimal temperature for the growth of C4 plants are generally higher than the optimum temperature for C3 plants. But with higher carbon dioxide concentration, the optimum temperature of C3 plants may also increase. In the drought situation, C4 weeds might also have advantage over C3 crops. So in total, the C3, C3 crops, though it is expected to have advantageous position in the future because of the carbon dioxide increase, C4 weeds will also have influence on these crops. So what will happen to C3 weeds and C4 crops? Opposite condition. So naturally, the C3 weeds, because of its influence on carbon dioxide and also because of its range, it will definitely have much more problem creating to the C4 crops. So simultaneous, C3 weeds and C3 crops and C4 weeds and C4 crops, what would it have? The logic is same type of plants in the same ecosystem would react to changes in the environment in similar way, but the magnitude differs. So I've just highlighted few things. Biomass accumulation from carbon dioxide doubling in crops is close to 30 to 40 percent in most of the crops. Cotton is, is exceptionally, it is 84 percent. But at the same time, for the doubling of carbon dioxide, the biomass accumulation in the C3 weeds is 79 percent to 272 percent. Then you can imagine how much biomass increase would happen because of doubling of carbon dioxide in the case of weeds compared to crops. The next important thing is invasive weeds. So the invasive weeds, the introduction is warmer polar region will see increased traffic and new invasive weeds. And in the case of colonization, more frequent or severe storms provide opportunities for establishment of new invasive weeds. As far as distribution is concerned, many invasive weeds are range limited by cold temperature. And because of increase in temperature, these weeds will go to higher latitudes. Coming to the management part, 
chemical control of invasive plants can be altered with raising carbon dioxide or changing climate. So this is a table which gives how the C3 and C4 weeds to the doubling of carbon dioxide would respond. Most of the C3, piece, uh, C3 species, almost the biomass is going to increase by one to one and a half time with increase in leaf area. In the case of C4 species, it is little lesser than the C3 species, but still there is an increase expected in the C4 species as well because of the doubling of carbon dioxide. There is a thorough investigation done by CSIRO Australia like with the weeds and what would be its possible impact in the future with the changing climatic condition. One example we can take with the parthenium which is not suited to winter dominant rainfall areas but may move into the summer dominant higher rainfall region. So by this kind of um, investigation, thorough investigation, we can uh, come to a conclusion which are the weeds which will impact those particular region in a greater way because of the changing climate so that we can tailor the management practices according, accordingly. Coming to the weed control aspect of it, the differential effect of carbon dioxide and climate change will alter the weed crop competitive interaction and the change in temperature, precipitation, wind and humidity may affect the effectiveness of the herbicides. Climate models can predict the likely impact on future distribution of weeds as we have seen through the CSIRO example. Greater increase in biomass will result in dilution of herbicide applied making the weed control more difficult and costly due to change in anatomical, morphological and physiological changes, increased leaf thickness, reduced stomatal number and conductance, the possibility of limited uptake of foliar applied herbicides, this will make it difficult for the control of weeds. One example with carbon dioxide impact on herbicide efficacy, so there is one picture, you can just see like uh, there are two uh, sets of uh, things, one is with our, uh, ambient carbon dioxide, another one is future carbon dioxide. You can see that the weed growth is going to be much more higher with the uh, future carbon dioxide kind of thing. The reason is the herbicide efficacy is reduced with the future carbon dioxide conditions and the bias for the reduction is not entirely known. However, if more pesticides are needed to kill the weeds, then more trace chemicals are likely in the environment. So again, this particular bit shows these are the different weed species with the ambient carbon dioxide and with increased uh, carbon dioxide concentration. We could see that there are more number of weeds which is actually exhibiting in the picture as well. Okay, so coming to the pest side. So globally, there are 360,000 insect species mainly live from the plant material. Damage by is caused by chewing on the plant tissues, sucking on the plant sap as well as transmitting the viruses. So the major drivers are higher temperature, enhanced carbon dioxide, altered wind pattern and increased frequency of floods. These are the drivers which actually causes the spread of the insects. So coming to the climate change and insect pests on crops, the first thing is herbivory. In this particular case, there are two different, um, two different views are expressed by the scientists. One view is global warming will increase the insect herbivory. There is another contrast view that the enriched carbon dioxide leading to lower plant quality, it will also reduce the herbivorous densities and increase the probability of extinction. Insects are ectothermic, very sensitive to temperature and cannot sustain living below, above, below or above certain threshold level. The global warming might benefit many insect species in the temperate region. The reason is change in geographical distribution. Another one is increased overwintering. Because of the increase in temperature, increased overwintering will happen. Change in the population growth rates, increase in the number of generations. Instead of five or six generation, it might make eight or nine generations. Then extension of developmental season, change in the crop pest synchrony, and change in the interspecific interaction and increased risk of invasion by migrant pest. So this is as far as the um, temperate regions are concerned. But in the case of tropical insect, 
The species may become extinct as they are already living at environmental temperature close to their optimum. So any increase in temperature will lead to extinction of that pest. The reduced nutrient quality of the C3 plants might lead to compensation by increasing feeding and of many insects. Population densities of chewing insects would be unaffected or decreased but do not increase while sap sucker population densities might increase under increased carbon dioxide concentration. These are results derived from many research researchers. So this particular part shows the predicted impact of global warming by 2100 on insect species. So the positive values are indicated by the uh, yellow and uh, orange and red color, whereas the negative values are shown by the blue color. You could see that the predicted impact of global warming is, in the, in the case of insect pest, in the close to equatorial region and lower latitudes, it's going to be the negative because the species is already experiencing close to the optimum condition. Any increase would lead to negative impact on the insect species, whereas the insect pest is going to be more predominant in the higher latitudes in both northern and southern hemisphere. But as far as nematodes are concerned, severe droughts are expected very frequently in the future, so which will result in reduction of soil water and it will negatively affect the soil nematodes. High average temperature will probably have little effect since thermal conductivity of soil is low. So this particular slide shows expected response of heteroptera species of communities under two scenarios of future climate change. That is one scenario is slight increase in temperature less than two degrees Celsius, which is near future. And the another scenario is subsequent temperature increase, which is more than two degrees Celsius, which may be after 2050s. So the distribution range, there is a likely shift in some species, especially those capable of long distance flight and associated with ornamental plants. And then in the abundance, likely to increase in the multi voltine species with flexibility in the life cycle in the near future, as well as in the far future. As far as the phenology is concerned, there is slight or moderate advance of early season. In the, in the Waltonism, additional generation in some multi volt expected in the near future, one or more additional generation are expected in the uh, far future. Then physiology and behavior, it is expected to change slightly to moderately and the community structure is also expected to change a slight. Increased carbon dioxide effects depends on insect to plant interaction because increased carbon nitrogen ratio in plant make poorer forage for the insect. So shifts in the plant densities, fewer toxin, tougher leaves, more tannins and phenols are expected because of the change in carbon dioxide concentration. So this will lead to deficiencies in micronutrient and to help the insects actually the nitrogen addition when we uh, apply nitrogen in indiscriminately it will also increase the insect feeding kind of things. So this is uh, one slide which I would like to show because non-crop pests could also impact uh, on arable rotation. For example, in the case of elevated carbon dioxide, especially in the legume crops, this will increase the nitrogen fixation and there will be numerous and bigger root nodules and more nitrogen fixed. So if you could see here, the number of root nodules is expected to increase to a greater extent, almost a doubling with the doubling of carbon dioxide, with the nodule length is also increasing. And simultaneously, if you just see this bit, the number of uh, root nodules when it is increasing, the number of uh, uh, insects is also it's, it's increasing linearly. So this kind of relationship is established with the increasing um, uh, advancement in the time. Then coming to climate change and diseases, so there is a good triangle like host pathogen environment triangle is existing as far as the disease invasion is concerned. Change in the host pathogen and climate can increase or decrease the amount of disease as a result of their interaction. Climate change influence on plant disease, it increase, increased the frequency of heat and drought. This may contribute to disease susceptibility or resistance. Drought can aggravate the effects of soil borne diseases like macrophamena, fusaria and others. Temperature governs the rate of reproduction for many pathogens and elevated carbon dioxide levels can change the plant structure, increased leaf thickness 
higher leaf area, higher plant biomass and carbon dioxide increases pathogen load on C3 or C4 plant as well as on the grasses. Even the elevated ozone, this can change the leaf surface structure which will affect the physiology, topography and chemical composition and this will also affect the mm, impact of plant diseases. So this is a, just a conceptual framework how the climatic data can influence the uh, diseases which can be modeled and the management uh, advisory systems can be drawn. So effects on plant disease management, the first thing is we can go with a delayed or adjusting planting date and then increased vulnerability to biocontrol agents, reduced efficacy of chemical control is expected, risk of movement of invasive pathogen species, reduced effectiveness of durable resistance, uncertainty for management methods and decision making becomes a problem, changing disease management strategies. These are expected with the changing climatic conditions. So the last part of it is crop improvement. Now to overcome the pessimistic influence of abiotic stresses like heat waves, cold waves, drought, etc., we need to go with the new and improved tolerant crop varieties. So this can happen through contemporary breeding techniques like in the Monsanto they are breeding for the crops like for resistance of uh, drought as well as for the high temperature. So those could be of uh, order of the uh, future and through understanding of the mechanism that counteract detrimental climate changes. So one example is increasing the yield potential of rice through various strategies is one is conventional hybridization and selection procedure. We can also go with the idiotype breeding heterosis breeding with hybridization and then genetic engineering is also possible. So one example of this application of genetic engineering in resistance development is transfer of genes across the species barrier. The example is yeast gene in tomato for salinity resistance. This is a great example available in many of the literatures and then the barbie gene in rice for drought tolerant. Novel gene identification is drought resistant gene in legume that is also is happening. So these are some of the examples quoted for ge genetic engineering. Coming to the conclusions, so the climate change can affect the pest or disease by increasing or decreasing the encounter rates between host and pathogen by changing the ranges of two species. So the disease severity positively is correlated with increased virulence of pathogen which are mediated by host resistance that is affected by climate change. Climate change will affect the plant pest and disease in relation to other global change phenomena such as new species, new vector, shift in land, expansion of tropical or temperate areas because of the change in temperature, then loss of biodiversity, etc. So how can we adapt to climate change? For growers, the early warning system for managing pest within the season by technical decision making. So you, we can adjust the sowing window either earlier or later so that we can create unfavorable situation for the pest species within the growing season. Second one is construction of longer term decision support system. By using the climate as well as the pathogen relationship, we can build the decision support system which can be used to for management decisions. Then for plant breeders and pesticide developers, prioritization of the disease, weeds or pest, it, it, is, it should be on the regional basis. Then identification of vulnerable region and hotspot so that we can develop appropriate management technologies. For the policy makers and donors, identification of important problems for the future investment, especially on the indirect impacts of climate change. Then application of financial tools as a buffer for protecting farmers from increased variability. In the natural system, distribution of resistance genes is important. Coming to the future direction, increased focus is need, needed on how a changing environment affect host pathogen evol evolution, especially when the carbon dioxide is increasing in, co in combination with the temperature, how it can influence the pathogen. So those studies are very much limited. So we need to concentrate on those kind of activities. And our invasive plant species better able to adapt to climate change and move to new areas rapidly. Like the CSIRO example in Australia, each country should have their own studies so that they can find out which area is going to become a hotspot for troublesome weeds as well as pest and pathogen. 
local and regional and international cooperation and collaborations are needed to understand the problem and to find solutions. Thank you very much.